ACDC by Elaine McGree. <laughs> Prologue. The lights are in a small pool on Olive, who is riding an exercise bicycle with a tablet and phone mounted on it. She is ending a short standing sprint. She takes a sip of water from a bottle set in a holder on the bike. Point Reyes is my favorite place to ride. And the East Bay Hills are beautiful too. Redwoods, the bridges and streams, and the Bay Trail. Oh, pretty much anywhere outdoors. Oh, I don't want to ride in the dark, and this is the darkest time of the year. So to get in enough training time, this exercise bike. Oh, um, not for racing just to be in shape for the bike tours on my trip. London, Paris, Milan, Rome, where I'll meet up with a friend and go together to a little place we've rented on the east side of Istanbul, then back to her place in Barcelona, and a last bike tour in the Dordogne Valley. Yeah, it's a long trip. But once I've used up the fuel to fly somewhere, I want to stay for a while. And weirdly, I love packing my suitcase. The lights come up on the rest of the cast in pools of light with their bags. Rafe, a bright pink plastic roller bag with swivel wheels. Terry, a really big dark one-way roller bag. Jake, a big duffel bag. And Mariana, a vintage brown leather suitcase with a belt on it. During all of the monologue, everyone adjusts their luggage in some way, loads it onto a wheelchair, and exits in a procession. And lists. Lists are my hedge against the inherent uncertainty of travel. I lay out, lay out all the clothes I'm taking, adding and subtracting pieces to take as little as possible. Now, a long sleeve shirt with sleeves that roll up counts as two pieces, a short sleeve shirt and a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. And the lists cast a spell. I take them with me, the lists, <laughs> and there are secondhand stores everywhere. Something someone else doesn't need anymore, but that would work for me. What's not to love? Scene one, hospital. In a foyer with an elevator, staircase, double doors to wards to the right and to the left into the ICU, and with a door to a small conference room. The foyer looks out through glass walls and windows of a waiting room, the audience, that has a gorgeous view. Leora, Rafe, and Olive are in the foyer. There is a large screen on which dates, song lyrics, images, and patterns evocative of locations are projected. On the screen right now, March 8th, 2020. Thank you. I wish my sister hadn't had to leave early. We understand how hard it is to get time off work. Both my brothers fly in tonight. They haven't seen our mother in a few years and they don't know. They love her, we all do so much, but they don't know, you know? They don't really know how she is. I'm so glad you could all be with her tomorrow. We'll come find you the following day at a room at 1.45. But if anything changes or you have any questions, you can call the number on this card. Well, thank you. I, I didn't know about you, you all. How was it, Ken? I was surprised. You asked our permission to talk to us about our mother's condition and, well, oh Lord, how much time she might have. We do want to know, even though it's hard. But dementia is brain failure. Just, mm, mm, mm. When my brothers see her, how it is for her, I do believe we'll be able to talk about her. That she can't eat on her own, you know, without choking. I made her biscuits and greens the last day, but all she got down was a bit of grits and coughed and coughed. So I agreed to that feeding tube because they need to see the others so they know for themselves. I think we can help by making recommendations for her care. Not that any of you are obliged to take our recommendations, but we make them to help take the pressure of making hard decisions off of you, off of family and friends. I don't know how you can do this every day, but thank you. 
Leora, are you comfortable with hugging? If you are... Leora uh, steps forward and puts her arms around Olive's neck. The elevator dings and opens. Leora detaches herself and steps in. Rafe moves up next to Olive and they formally hold eye contact with Leora. The elevator doors close. I don't know how I can still be doing this after what, 35 years? Me either. What, me either, me or you? <laughs> I don't have your 35 whatever years of hospice and palliative care nursing, but I have doubts about the work and my capacity. Oh, dude, do I know? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't try and talk you out of your feelings, but yeah, I'll, I'd hate to lose you. Not even close. Not to worry, dear one. I can't believe Doc Terry was called away to another admin meeting. It's got to be a coronavirus thing, right? Well, we'll catch her later. That's sick. And tell her what's up. <laughs> Doc? <laughs> hey, you're too young for Bugs Bunny. I don't know if I could cope with life if I hadn't been twisted by Looney Tunes on Sunday morning. I mean, I wonder, is, is Buck was Funny still a thing? Like, me, me. That's Roadrunner, and Bugs Bunny is timeless. <laughs> like waiting. He gestures at the waiting room. The screens show a view of the San Francisco Bay from a high rise in North Oakland. All this glass for a waiting room. What a view. Two bridges. And the people in the waiting room, they wait alone in twos and threes, and sometimes in a crowd of 15. I've seen weeping while the sun sets, and laughter or shouting while fog whisks across the windows. When I'm with people waiting, when we're engaged and connecting, I can be with their hopes and fears and tears and anger, but as an idle observer, yeah, I, I just want to look away. I've done a fair amount of prayer in that room, in all kinds of weather. And Olive, I don't think of the word idle as being in your universe. Olive's <laughs> phone alerts. Uh, oh, mind if I check this? Um, it's my son. As long as you tell all, I'll check the referral line. Text alert. Still pretty bad nausea. Try ginger tea or candy or soda or um, acupressure points. No, autocorrect. Points. Acupressure points. <laughs> Fat thumbs, mom. Will suggest acupoints. Love, <laughs> Love you. Love you too. Okay. Oh, we have any new referrals? Nope, just the two you've already seen and I can take the next one. Is she still nauseated? Yeah, and Ginger isn't helping. You know, I only puked once when I was pregnant. Struck by nausea, waiting to turn left at an intersection. The light goes green, so what to do? People honk, so I hit the gas, turn left, and uh, <laughs> halfway through, spectacularly out the window. And that was it. <laughs> She has continuous nausea and now headaches and we're all just waiting. All that hope and fear with your imagination, which seems to be your best friend and worst enemy, it must be hell. No, spoken like a true chaplain. Olive and Rafe's work phones, text alert. Meeting expeditiously conducted, nearly consummated. I can join you at the conference room in a few minutes. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You think consummated is Terry speak for? A clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> her way with words. She'd say the artistry of her verbal camouflage is rivaled only by the artistry of her quilt. So probably a clusterfuck. <laughs> Look, is that the Farallons? Olive places her hands on the glass door and looks out. The lights change slowly to a fantasy look and we hear ambient beach sounds. I grew up near the ocean. My brother, a few years older than me, did a report on sharks. 
He requested and received information on every recorded shark attack in the history of this country and Australia and South Africa. I couldn't look away from those pictures. Like we couldn't look away from the pictures of concentration camp survivors that my father kept in a box in a trunk. Cavities and bones and the skin. The lights changed back to the hospital. What? Oh, um, can you really see the Farallons? Or is it a fog bank? And sharks. Sharks? Well, you don't even know they're there. I, mean, I hate that, not knowing what's coming. It's right up there with the abject vulnerability of loving. <laughs> abject vulnerability. <laughs> that sounds like Terry. Dear one, life is a waiting room. Oh, geez, can't you give me a different <laughs> frame? Terry comes out of the elevator to join them. Greetings, earthlings. Was that a coronavirus meeting? I hope you brought strawberry yogurt for us today, Miss Olive. We're gonna need a flavor change for the show. Well, it's looking bad, bad. Like this can bring us together or smash us into pieces. For me, it would be exponentially preferable to do our debrief first and then furtively confer about the admin meeting over lunch. Okay, what she said. <laughs> Let's do this puppy. Text alerts, all their work phones go off. This is a picture of a field hospital in China. <sighs> really, Olive? Uh-oh. Yeah, she's got a point. Rescheduled the bike tours to late April, May. They will cancel if CDC issues a level three risk assessment. God, she's been only about this for weeks. Was Emiliana in that meeting? Emiliana is on high alert. She's a charge nurse for the ICU has tracked the CDC's less than stellar performance, reads every iota of information about the virus, and has vector diagrams and spreadsheets. Spreadsheet, oh, Terry, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not so worried about getting sick, but I don't wanna get stuck somewhere. I've been planning this trip for a year, bikes, boats, and obscure but quirky museums, and maybe even hot travel sticks? I can't tell. Are you pessimistic on this, Terry? I'm watching and waiting. But Olive, we don't call it pessimistic. We call it realistic. I'm mm -hmm. black and Jewish. It's a cultural imperative. <laughs> I think it'll all be OK. Well, look, China's pulling out all the stops to contain it. Let's have a little faith. And by the way, happy International Women's Day. That's a big holiday in Europe, I hear, but not so much in the rest of the U.S., but happy March 8th anyway. All of their work phones, text alert. And this is a picture of an overflow triage center in a parking lot outside of a hospital in Italy. Oh, no. Italy, too, Olive? Stop, okay? Just stop. The lights changed to an alternate reality fantasy look. Rafe and Terry move to the conference room door and put their hands on it. Olive looks at them and then back at the audience. We've had hundreds or probably thousands of meetings in that little conference room. We say we want to help you live as well as possible for as long as possible. We ask, what's most important to you right now, and how can your medical care support that? We say die, and if asked... Days to weeks, weeks to months. We say, we share your hopes, but wonder if you're open to thinking about what to do if your hopes aren't realized. Rafe enters a code to open the door, and as the door opens, it stops the music. <laughs> it stops the music and breaks the spell. Lights back to normal hospital. Okay, so let's do this puppy. What did we learn? What do they need? What's our plan? Okay, we learned Leora, the oldest daughter, who seems to be likely the new matriarch, She's her, uh, she knows her mother said yes years ago when the ER doctor asked if she wanted them to do everything. I'd like to send anyone that asks, do you want us to do everything straight to hell? 
It needs, it has to have context. Otherwise, the implication is doing everything will prolong life when, if you have a terminal illness, doing everything may actually prolong death. Maybe bad enough to send someone to hell, which I don't <laughs> even think you believe in hell. Not total hell hell, but a kind of hell. I think, though, that Leora knows that doing everything for their mother now would not be a good kindness. Did you notice? how Leora patted Laverne's hand and Laverne smoothed them Leora's sleep when we talked about dementia as a kind of brain failure. Yes, I noticed that too. And then the, oh look, a baby deer moment. In the meeting when we asked if they wanted to hear about tube feeding for people with end-stage dementia. Totally baby deer, but I'm not worried. Okay? It's so universal to want to feed people you love and to have a hard time letting that go. Lior redirected the conversation to the view out the window. Laverne noted the Marin headlands in particular. Leduc, the younger son with the sequin bow ties, oh my, <laughs> asked the name of my church. They were showing us in that moment they had enough. They needed to deflect. But we can come back to it after they've all spent time with their mom. Emiliana probably would say we've all been baby during coronavirus. I'm not going to want to travel for a while after the grandbaby comes. Lay off. I'll offer prayer for them tomorrow, and we might have to have a moment of prayer with them all together, right before or after the meeting, if they want, or both. Okay, plan. The sons visit and get a good look at their mom's condition. We support them with prayer, and then we meet again to discuss tube feeding and code status. Anything else? But Terry, can you keep an eye on her symptoms? Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we good? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. So much. Is this a strawberry yogurt tank? Uh, but first, we need to do our daily resilience practice and then let's run the list of our patients again. So today's daily resilience practice is unicorn poo bullseye. She pulls a target out of her pocket and pins it to the wall. Target. She takes a ball of rainbow clouds out of her pocket and holds it up. Unicorn poo. Okay. Five tries each. She breaks up the clay, gives pieces to all of them. They start out taking turns, but eventually interrupt each other and start throwing at each other general goofiness and suits. Yeah, and the winner by snaps of their choice for the entire team. I was actually on the wrestling team, but otherwise a complete non-jock. As always, what happens in the conference room during resilience stays in the conference room. Am I right? <laughs> all right. I want the latest of your grandbaby, Olive. The due date is? End of October. I'm deliriously happy, and I don't know if I can stand to love like this again. Code blue, room 608. Code blue, room 608. Code blue, room 608. Ah, uh, that's me. Can we meet back here and run the list in an hour? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Text alert from Emiliana to everybody. The Grand Princess is now visible from the south-facing windows of the ICU. <gasps> Woohoo! A land! <laughs> Lights. Scene two. London. Olive is at home on the exercise bike. She is listening to a British bicycling blog while she pedals leisurely. Welcome to the bike show with me, Harold Thurston. Coming up in the podcast, you'll be able to find out what happens when the Bike Show podcast crashes head-on with our hipper, younger podcast sisters from Wheel Suckers. But first, an email from a listener regarding my books. Dear Harold, thanks for another great Lost Lanes book. I bought your first because I live in the South. I bought your new book because the wife and I are looking to do some exploring this summer. I am of an age, brackets 70, where a lot of people I know try to convince us to go on cruises. I tell them that happiness for us is a quiet country road on our bicycles with the prospect of a good pub meal at the end of the road. My friends think I'm mad and the feeling is mutual. My friends think I'm mad, but London? The lights change to a fancy look. We hear traffic and busy London life, including honks, to which all of responds. She is pedaling fast now, whizzing through the directions, leaning for the turns. Up uh, Park Crescent, right on Marleybone. 
Right on Great Port, the left on Carver Nam, the hostel. She dismounts and walks into the hostel. <laughs> the YHA Central in London is north of the Thames. Even with a private room and a shared kitchen, it's cheaper than a hotel. She sees a bulletin board held up by Terry and reads mm. a notice. Activities, mm. pub crawl at 10, stats and dart at 8. <laughs> the Emiliano Rake and Tom characters walk on. They brought a wheelchair with an IV attached pole draped with wigs and clothing put on as I describes it. Terry exchanges her bulletin board for a cardboard frame that says registration across the top. The hostel is full of interesting looking people. Spiky purple hair in a green tutu, flaming orange flat top leather bow in a duffel bag, pink long hair and a cape. <laughs> she approaches registration. Um, excuse me, could you tell me whether or not I can <laughs> um, I said, could you tell me how to <laughs> Can you give me directions <laughs> to the Vagina Museum? <laughs> well, it's the only one in the world and it opened last fall and the current exhibit is Mothbusters, Vagina Myths and How to Fight Them. <laughs> uh, oh, for crying out loud, it's a one-of-a-kind museum. The ensemble confers and then drifts over to all of them. Uh, the, 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 the Vagina Museum? Yeah, do you know it? <laughs> <laughs> In a manner of speaking. Vaginas, queens, shado. We would like to know them. Ours, if we have them, or others. But a museum? <laughs> That's too good to be true. No. It is true. The museum is about 20 minutes away by bicycle and spitting distance from a statue of Amy Winehouse and near a bar she used to abuse herself in. <laughs> Will this Amy Winehouse reference make me more credible? <laughs> you, who have brought this interesting topic to our attention, might you allow us to accompany you? That was so formal. Well, yes. See, this is why I travel. Terry pulls out sets of handlebars and gives them ceremonially to the ensemble and drives the wheelchair as if it were a bicycle. And me? Oh, I'm coming! <laughs> Olive gets back on her bike and leans into the turns as the other four swoop around her and swirls like a flock of birds, a relief of movement and color. Camden, crisp and unusually dry for London, Camden Market, Camden Stables, and here, a brick lane between tall buildings leading to a little white sign. Vagina Museum, a wooden door. She hands off her bike to Long Pink and approaches the door. It all seems so Harry Potter. Like going into a shop to pick a lawn, uh, which is perfectly antithetical to going into a vagina museum. <laughs> and that's nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> The doorknob is cool. She and turns it, it comes off in her hand. Oh, oh I, I broke it. it. It fell right off. And oh, oh, I'm falling, falling, falling. My phone floats, my phone. The lights change back to reality, and there's ringing and text alerting and all manner of electronic dinging. All of it is on her exercise bike. She picks up her phone and says, There you are. Text alert. Ginger doesn't help. Is headache a thing? Could be a thing. Can I get more details? And when's the next checkup? Tomorrow. I'll text you after. Gotta go. Love you. Please, yes. Love you too. She starts pedaling again and notices she has an unheard voicemail. She hits speaker on her phone. Dear bike and boat tourists. As you probably know, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a Travel 3 health notice for the Netherlands yesterday. I regret to inform you that we are cancelling your rivers, bike and barge history tour. Well, fucking course. Right. <laughs> Scene 3, hospital, April 8th, 2020. We see all of Mass talking on the phone as lights on the elevator rise. With that frequency of vomiting, 
we recommend converting as many medications as possible to IV administration, uh, especially our antiemetics and opioids. Great, great. We'll, we'll chart check this afternoon. Call or text if you need us. The elevator door is open. She takes off her mask and puts it in her pocket. Alcohols her hands from a bottle while cautiously exiting the elevator. Rafe props the conference room door open, waves, and takes a few steps into the foyer. Olive takes a few steps out of the elevator, but they keep their distance. I got an empty elevator. I don't think I could get on an elevator with someone else in it, but I'm afraid of the stairwells, too. Like, what if somebody came down the stairs while I was going up? I know, dear one. First aid back is truly freaky, especially if you haven't been out of the house. He goes over to greet Olive, but then stops awkwardly away, so they kind of wave at each other. Here. It's a paper bag with some masks in it. This isn't hospital PPE. That's all locked up, and you wouldn't. I wouldn't. They're blue and look like standard issue surgical masks, so probably no one will clock them as homemade. I get that we need to save PPE for people doing direct care. We're just in the halls and on the phones, but you know everyone should be wearing masks. I heard a nurse got sent home for wearing a homemade mask in Roseville, maybe? Where did you get these? Oh, uh, I'm redeeming myself with this. It's the uh, People's PPE Project. <laughs> We commissioned out-of-work costume designers in the San Francisco Opera Costume Shop. It's kind of an underground... Actually, don't, don't tell me. Need to know. Need to know. <laughs> it's serious, dude. We're getting masks to our disabled friends and their attendants that are going house to house to house. There's a bunch in there. Take one home to Dev and give him my love. Maybe this will help, my boo. He is seriously freaked out about me working in the hospital. Aren't we all? And send a couple to your parents. And wear one when you go into the ICU. Wow. Sawhorses blocking the waiting room. She goes to the waiting room and looks out the windows. Look, Rafi, there's like no traffic on the Bay Bridge. But the light on the water is like shards on a mirror. It's so beautiful, it's creepy. Oh, were you able to get the new code for the conference room from Emiliana? She's not allowed to give me the code. I have to go through security every time I want to go in to use the group conference phone for our meeting. Security? Who are we kidding? What are you doing for decon at home? Oh. Uh, Bleach wash for my shoes, strip in the laundry room, chuck the clothes into the washer, take a shower, wash my hair, then wipe down anything I touch. And groceries? What is that? To wipe or not to wipe? <laughs> Are you still in the garage? Garage is overstating the ruggedness. If I were Butch, I'd call it a man cave, but truly, <laughs> it's a rumpus room. <laughs> so, um, uh, the meeting debrief. Should we start without Terry? God, I just really miss being in the same room with everyone. I, I didn't realize how much face communication we do. Let's wait five. I feel lost most of the time without seeing faces and bodies and body language. This last meeting, 11 souls on a conference call, including the interpreter. I think that's my personal most for people in a meeting ever much less by phone, and I- Text alert, their work phones go off. Urgent admin meeting, redundantly in, ab in abstract, and now selfies for new ID photos mandatory. <laughs> Sigh, hope your brain doesn't explain. God, sorry, autocorrect. Explode. <laughs> Text went free for debrief update. Badges, really? I'll write the visit note and send it to you to cosign. Thumbs up. They were doing some kind of art project with our badge pictures, but now they want selfies to minimize contact. If Terry is in another coronavirus meeting, I hope she'll get the backstory on testing and PPE. Yeah, who knows, dude. Seems like chaos to me. I, I know people are really trying, though. 
Uh, let's go to the conference room. They walk awkwardly, maintaining distance. <laughs> is this going to break us? All of us? The Ramirez, Jefferson, Castillo, Washingtons, all the aunties and abuelos, the bus drivers, everyone. No one gets to see or be with or touch their loved ones. No real time live contact with our team, with the attending physicians. If you can't see something, how can it be real? Text alert. Oh. Rafi, oh, it, it's Jake. Is it okay? Headache's getting worse. Doesn't seem right. Heading to appointment. Can we talk? I'd really like more derails. Details. <laughs> Can't. Plate's full. Love you, Mom. Shit, shit, shit. Her headaches are worse. Oh, they're trying to get an appointment. What? Yes, what? I mean, what? The actual oh, olive. Dear one, more waiting. Your favorite. Consider yourself hugged. Ray. Oh. Ah. Doodla, your collar is up and back. Yeah. And um, sage green, kind of a new look for you. Oh, okay, God. We really need to do the debrief in the play. But then promise. We'll talk about the grandbaby. Promise. Okay. The patient's wife went to ransom their oldest son or something like that, but the border closed and now they can't get back, back here to relative refuge. Their little kids are being cared for by aunties. Most of the extended family is undocumented and, well, then they're afraid to get services. Two other people from their household are hospitalized, probably with coronavirus, but they weren't sure where either. Highland or the general, and the rest of the household, they don't go to work, sick or not, no one eats. They have a cousin who's a doctor in Houston who's going to call us. And one of the uncles thinks we want the ventilator for someone else. Well, it's, it's in the news, so all we can do is reassure them. We burned up most of our time in the meeting going in circles, explaining everything we don't know for sure, but think might be true. We're not really supposed to be here, the two of us. But he opens the door and goes in, keeping the door propped open with a chair and sits. Olive enters and they sit as far away from Rafe as possible. We told them CPR in a code blue probably wouldn't work and they've coded him twice and he's still alive. So of course they want us to do everything to keep him alive. It totally makes sense because we don't know, we don't, we don't know what the residual complications are, and we don't know if his lungs will heal, or his kidneys will start up again, or if he'll talk again, or how he is surviving his incredibly low oxygen levels. We don't know, more than the usual, we don't know. This is, we don't even have an educated guess of not knowing this. Buddy, you seem pretty crispy. You need a break. Oh, no better yet. You need an aura fluffing. I need something. I'm afraid all the time. I hold my breath in the ICU and now out on the streets. I actually thought twice about picking up takeout in Chinatown. It's a scary time to be taken for Chinese, to be Asian, but here in Oakland? And my grandparents say it's bad in LA too. I like to think that my fear level will come down. I like to think that a lot. Calming and fluffing. Ugh. We'll come back to the debrief. I've got this, I've got you. Aura fluffing olive. <laughs> Calming, then fluffing. <laughs> I know, I the, know. The lights begin to change. Come here. Get ready. Come on. 
you are experienced with a great panoply of spiritual tools. In this space, in this moment, you are respectfully adding to your Episcopal bag of tricks. <laughs> Close your eyes. Okay. See your bag open before you. It's full of insights from chaplaincy, from your brilliant Tunisian Jew boyfriend and the parable of the untieable knot. Ray, relax your shoulders. Okay. Take a deep breath. Okay. Give a little shake. Yeah, your bag is full of spells from those trippy witches you live with. Take a deep breath and full of cool spins from the Sufi place you've been checking out. Now, and it's high time, buddy, now, we had aura combing and fluffing. So one more big breath in and out. The ensemble joins the stage with the combing and fluffing and some sort of movement. They sing. <laughs> Keep breathing. That's the most important part. You kick, 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 kick and then you glide. You kick, 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 kick and, and then you glide. It's all about the rhythm. It's all about the rhythm. It's all about the rhythm of your heart. Ah, oh, the final fluff. Poof! Shazam! It's so really marvelous. <laughs> well, thanks, Olive. That was curiously um, refreshing. <laughs> ah, sort of like one of those weird gelato flavors. <laughs> Aura, comb, and fluff stays in the conference room, oh, right? Absolutely. Text alert. Terry steps out. Imminently arriving, meet at the elevator. Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. They slowly exit the conference room and make their way towards the elevator. So, our plan to support them the patient and the family? Whatever we can think of that will help it be real for them, given that they can't see them. More clarity about what they can expect and prayer. You give good prayer. Okay, I can appreciate prayer even if it's not my thing, and we'll know more about it the next time we meet. Except they don't want to meet with us again. They said they would like you to call, right? Yes. So we have a thread of connection. I know, I know, I know, I know. God, this sucks. You don't get to call on the big guy when you're throwing the chaplain under the bus, Miss Non-Believer. You think I'm throwing you under the bus with a fluffy aura, even? <laughs> okay, well then, how about uh, sacred entities? This sucks better? Infinitely. <laughs> oh, that was almost funny. Oh my, we followed the deer right out of the forest. Terry steps out of the elevator. How was debrief, and do you need me to follow up on anything? Uh, good enough, and you betcha. We need you to stay in touch with the ICU for medical updates and on the lookout for any new information about treatments, disease progression, and prognostication for coronavirus. Um, I'll connect with the cousin doctor to see if he might be a source of support for the family and Rafe is on the family prayer calls. Code blue, room ICU 666, code blue, ICU 666, code blue, ICU No ICU rest for the wicked, chaplains at every code. And don't say anything about room 666 because I have to go once more, stand outside someone's room, and pray at them through the glass. My kind of hell. I miss touch. I need to touch people, fluffed or not. He pulls the mask out that Olive gave him and exits through the ICU doors. Rafe is our thread of connection on the, to the family. He'll let us know if they want another meeting. I'm a little worried about them. They seem more fried than the usual OMG, this is a stressful job. Mm. They settled on May? Well, it's either still, but I'm practicing. God, I'm worried. You know, not about the pronouns, about Rafe. He really seems fried. We have a follow-up phone conference together later. I'll check in with him then. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, we got a couple of new referrals. A possible end of the road for cancer treatment in a young woman. 
There's also a symptom consult for shortness of breath. I can meet you there in 30. And I'm going to chart check on the um, intractable vomiting we switched over to IV meds. I'll text you after your last meeting if we need new orders for that one. Okay, you fly a good plane, Olive, but I'm taking the follow-up on the intractable vomiting. Okay. If they need orders, you won't have to call me. Fewer calls is better. We need you free to triage the new referrals. Olive and Terry's work phones text alert. This week, Gurfi wants pizza from Zachary's with sausage. Gurfi? Her, her girlfriend, Isabella. Uh, can't you just say I told you so? And I think they're cloned. Oh, shit. Closed. <laughs> More of your homemade yogurt than... Oh, and <laughs> how's London? <laughs> Laugh right emoji. <laughs> Gurfi. I can try Gurfia and Cornelia. She utter utterly rejects the wife. Isn't boyfriend Burfi? And then our NB friends? Nerfy, maybe? Yeah, no. Jeez. God. Amelia was relentless about my trip, or ex trip, or non trip. I am ferociously and not secretively glad that you're here, and concurrently, truly sorry your trip got wrecked. If I said hella anymore, which I don't, since it's been totally appropriated, I would say hella whack, but nah. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't tell you. I was supposed to, it was supposed to be a big quilt cool exposition in Berlin. Quilts of the African diaspora. I was contemplating surprising you at the last minute. Wow, Terry, really? That would have been amazing. Well, we, okay, this is weird, but almost worse than not going on the trip has been finding out that I'm old. <laughs> you know, if you're 65, risk, blah, blah, risk. And if you're over 70, holy moly, risk, 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 blah, 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 blah. I was cruising along and it's been like hitting a wall. Like masks. Esteemed elder, I have three bags of fabric for that. It's all cotton, left over from quilting projects. I can leave it on your porch when I get off work. Oh, that is excellent. Oh, and here. She takes out another bag with a mask and tosses it to Terry. I used up all the scraps from the polypropylene bags we cut up, but the non-woven polypropylene that I ordered from Alibaba arrived. Blue, it's the same color as our surgical masks. Uh, there's starting to be a run on it, but I got a full roll and just in time. I've already made about 15 masks, and I'll porch some of them for you. My research says this uh, NWPP, it's pretty much the same as the yellow gowns we use for aerosol infection PPE. The research, such as it is, indicates a layer of cotton and a layer of NWPP would be even better than either alone. So your quilt pieces will have another life. So what was it like to sew this? Oh, the NWPP, it's like sticky. It took me forever and they're raggedy on the inside, look. I used pipe cleaner over the nose, but it's not a good seal. Flashing. We could cut it into thin strips, maybe a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch. That would make a great nose piece. I'll drop some off for you and my tin snips. Flashing, wow, impressive. Oh, but we have tin snips, so no thanks on that. All is work phone alerts. Oh, I need to take this call. Oh yeah, it's about one of our um, new referrals, but listen. Hi, uh, this is the RN of the day for palliative care. Yeah, we, we saw the referral for 738, metastatic breast cancer admitted for pleural effusion. We know her. We've been following her in the clinic for symptom management. We plan to see her today and every day for symptom management. Well, she and her family have to get an update from oncology before we meet with them about what they want to do. She's been really clear. She has young children at home and wants any therapies that might extend her life. We are. We, we are available. We are ready, willing to meet with her and her family. But oncology has to talk to her first about her options. 
for us to have a meaningful conversation. It is. It is. It is. It is so sad. I do have an adult child and a grandbaby on the way. I'll, I'll ask our chaplain to go by and check them out. Okay? And, hey, take care of yourself. Yeah. Bye. You want me to go? No. I'll, I'll go by and see that nurse later and make sure the oncologist will visit. But would you take the symptom assessment for the shortness of breath uh, on your own? It's uh, room 1020. I got it. Okay. <coughs> Call me if you have any questions. I, I put in a note with the basics. You know, I'm a terrible sewer. Seamstress? <laughs> well, if I were any good at all, I'd be a crappy seamstress. But I'm really a shitty sewer. Written out, that's the same as shitty sewer. <laughs> yes, I knew you would get that. One of the many reasons I love you. <laughs> I must bid you adieu. Hail to the homemade masks. All hail the people's PPE. You know, you're going to see pieces of your quilt art on people's faces all over Oakland. Well, except for the not going anywhere and not seeing anything. <laughs> uh, I'm making them for the hospice staff. Administration has made it clear homemade masks are unwelcomed, but the staff is going from home to home. Masking will protect the staff, the patients, and their families. So I'm undeterred. The lights start to change with pretty patches of light. Scraps, lavender and yellow, turquoise and coral, sea green and violet. The leftover pieces get a new light bouncing around town on some of my favorite faces. I'll see those, and that is exquisitely cool. Lights out on Olive and Terry imagining her favorite masked faces. Scene four, Barcelona. On the screens, we see the Gaudi dragon. The lights are on Olive on her exercise bike, pedaling and looking out at the view. In Park Well, Barcelona, the Gaudi dragon or lizard, depending on who you talk to or read, is a or the highlight of the park. I want to touch it. The mosaic, it's different textures, the rough and smooth piece and seam. All the bright shards of color pieced together to make a whole. It's hard to know a thing without touching it. She looks out again at the view. Down the hill through the neighborhoods of Gracia, Raval, Exemple, past the erotic museum of Barcelona, and the Museum of Funeral Carriages, <laughs> both of which I'll visit later, is the Mediterranean Sea. She gets off her bike and parks it and walks. The screens we see, on the screens we see the sea. Tom, Emiliana, and Terry run down to the shoreline with paddle boards and paddles. Rafe remains up on the beach holding a board and a paddle. He sets a huge picnic basket on the sand and spreads out a large blanket. The motion of the water breaks the light into little pieces that flash, bouncing like the light off the shiny pieces of the dragon. The gang launches their paddle boards, takes a few strokes, enjoys themselves, waves it all up in the distance. Last one in is a rotten egg. <laughs> Go get him. I know this brightness. I played in the Pacific Ocean all through my childhood of copper tone suntan lotion. I could stay in the water for hours. Are there sharks in the Mediterranean? <laughs> everyone, look, everyone, look. There's Morocco, Alger Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt, and way over there, there's Syria and Yemen, and Palestine, and Israel. There are refugees. And capsized boats. People in the water or the desert, scattered, broken from countries fled. There are unwelcoming shores and deserts. And those who profit off human misery. Un hueso, dejeuner, lunch, Spanish red, a French red, an Italian red, saloon, olive oil, manchega, anchovies. Come, you tempest tossed. 
Hey, a little swell is coming up. Let's see if we can catch the shore break. <laughs> Race you! They splash each other and get out of the water. Tom stacks his bread, his board on Emiliana's and Terry's. Of those who leave the refugees, some will live and some will die trying to be birthed on safer, not safe, but safer shores. Or cross borders. In someone else's country, a migrant is a refugee deserving of humanitarian aid. Terry pours and hands cups of wine out. How bad would it have to be for you to leave your home? They clink cups together and toast. You know, whatever we can imagine, I think it's worse. They throw their cups on one side of the picnic basket and out of the other side they take broken pieces of ceramic and lay them down on the blanket. The pieces make a small pack. At a ceremony to honor one of our elders a few years ago, we made a mosaic pathway in the yard at her house at Black Cat in the Mission, all from cups, plates, and bowls that had broken, slipping from hands arthritic or from hands too small for the weight, or that had been jettisoned from tabletops by careless elbows. We collected them and brought them to the ritual that our broken pieces collectively would make a path into the end of time for our beloved elder. We hear an instrumental version of you kick and then you glide. Olive picks up the picnic basket and the other four take the corners of the blanket and carry it in procession off stage. Text alert. Lights change. She has high blood pressure. We'll retest weekly. Oh no, how can we help? Don't know. Waiting. Love you, Mom. Love you, too. It's more rough going. Lights out on Olive with the picnic basket. <clears throat> Scene 5, the hospital foyer five months later. On the screen, we see the Orange Day, September 8, 2020. Orange. Olive is in the foyer looking out of the bay through the waiting room windows. We have, everybody is wearing masks. Orange. Holy shit. The world is orange. It's a hellscape. She texts Rafe. Were you in the last code? You okay? Orange sky. W-E-T. No, no. What the fuck? <laughs> Text alert. Nick, me big favor now, please. I'm in the foyer outside the ICU waiting room. I'll come out. As Emiliana steps out, she's alcohol in her hands. Hola, oh, uh, baby cakes. What's the favor? We need to get a tape recorder and tapes for 621. Uh, you talked to the family, yes, yesterday? Music, they say. His family, they say he has to have music. Um, his daughter brought a tape recorder and, and, and cassettes. She's downstairs, outside with the ambulance bay, waiting for you in the orange, in the smoke. Why don't you, why don't they play the music for him from home? You have that iPad, right? You can take it in the room, or is it broken again? Not Everybody has a computer, Olive. The family doesn't have a computer. Yeah, right, of course. Oh, and you know, um, Rafe went up on the weekend to minister to some of those families burned out in Sonoma. <laughs> me, me, Olive, look at me. Focus. I need you to do this. Okay, you got any more of those masks you made lying around? I know you're part of a mask-making underground act. I don't think his family <laughs> has- I have an extra N95 with a vent for smoke in my pocket. I'll give her that for now and see what I can find. So we're going to bring in electronics from the outside? No, 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 it, it runs on batteries. We're not plugging it in so it can blow a circuit or anything. No, we'll wipe it down. Okay, I can't leave the unit, so it's you. Okay, yes. Lily, you seem so more than usual even. Are you, are you okay, whatever that means? This man, in 621, he, he speaks with Sili. And I do a little, a few words from my mom's parents. They're from the same town, San Lorenzo and Chiapas. <laughs> We're probably some kind of cousins or, or something. When someone hears you speak in their language, they feel safer. They don't mean to, but they expect you to make things work for them. 
I am wearing all of their heavy hopes. <laughs> Steady, Freddy. So this is the most important thing we could do to take care of this family. Let them take care of him, their abuela. I, I don't know anything for sure anymore. But this, this is something that we can do. The granddaughter, she's wearing a lime green jacket and cowboy boots in the parking lot. Code blue, room 618, code blue, room 618, code blue, oh, room 618. No. no, 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 she was so young, 618, she was so, we just fetched her. You find her, find, find her for me, cowboy boots no. and music. Text alert goes off and all looks at it as she keeps walking and getting into the elevator. Blood pressure worse, headache and pain, going to hospital for checkup. Hospital, oh no, should I come? Mom, they won't let you in. Oh shit. Maybe Jeez. not me. Jeez, of course. Oh, love, love, love. Update when you can. Oh no, no. She texts Rafe. Um, call me when free. Free. Free if ever. Ha ha. The lights come up on Rafe in profile, praying into the phone and making the sign of the cross at someone. He remains intermittently visible throughout the scene, constantly ministering. Terry, you free yet? The light's up on Terry, talking into her personal phone. Her work phone alerts, she picks the text, she checks the text and puts it away to finish her call. What did he do? Sorry, 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 I'm so tired. Yes, yes I can do that. How much is the bail? Did anyone get hurt? All of exits the elevator and walk towards the back of the hospital. I know they murdered her. I met now in the demonstration. Did in I'll send right after we hang up. How's Auntie Tessie? Olive arrives at the back of the hospital, looks around, and sees cowboy boots. She waves and puts on an N95 ma mask with the valve of smoke, goes out the door, and stops 10 feet back. Cowboy boots wears a cloth bandana over her nose and mouth. Uh, you're the nurse? Yep. You'll take this to him? She holds up a large Ziploc bag with a small tape recorder and cassettes. She puts it on the ground and backs up. Um, please, put this mask on. The air is shit. She picks up the tape recorder bag. Por favor, can you make sure he gets it? See, mi abuelo? I can't believe how much I want to touch her on the arm or... Yesterday, we told her and all his family that we believe, as best we understand this disease, her grandfather's dying. Déjalo. Uh, leave it in the room, the recorder. Uh, turn it on when you go in. I can't go in. There isn't enough of the best protective equipment for anyone except those doing direct patient care. Even our chaplains can't go in, and these smoke masks don't work in the hospital. I'm trying to arrange for the respiratory therapist to take the Si no dejaros, o sea, we would do it. We would go in to hold his hand y, y a cantar, a cantar su, su música favorita. Mientras su alma deja su cuerpo. If you would just let us. Por favor. Come back and tell me what happens. I will. I'm not leaving until you come back. I will. I will come back. We're all trying. We really Yo are. Yo sé que no es tu culpa que... I know you're trying. But it's not enough. Olive goes back into the hospital in a lineup, swipes her badge, has her temperature taken, sanitizes, and enters the hospital. Text alert from Terry. Where are you? I'm near the chapel. Oh. You called. What's broken, or what else is broken, I should say? Oh, can you come with me to the ICU while we talk? 
I'm taking this tape recorder and tapes to the Midiana for a patient. Something's going on with the grandbaby. Pain, maybe contractions. They're on the way to get it checked out. Maybe I should just drop everything and go to be with them. Miss Olive, no hospital is like an invader's. I know, I know. That's what Jake said, but I feel like I should be there. An excruciatingly universal feeling. I want to say a word, but I promised I wouldn't. Well, good, because I'm beyond being on my last nerve. What, what happened? I mean, what else happened? Oh, no, 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 no. No, there's not another video. Stop! No! Not that we know about anyway. Although, surely, somewhere, a black person is being brutalized. It's my family in Louisville. I should, I should be there with them. Like one of my cousins is in jail for the usual, being angry while black, for being black. I'm good, Phil, I'm good, damn. The lights change and only Terry is lit. We hear You Don't Want Me by the Oakland Interfaith Choir. You want my song, my dance? My hair, my sweater, my face, my body, my skin, my lips, my jaw, my fat, my straight, my gay, my plain, my thin skin, but you don't want me. You don't want me. Just don't want me. Terry bends over with her hands on her thighs, breathing deeply, and then stands up. The lights come back to the hospital. I don't want to be so damn good. Brianna Taylor lived down the street from my oldest aunt, Jesse. A no knock warrant murder. The neighborhood is in constant turmoil. The fuck the police part of the family is refusing to talk to the cop part of the family that's already in trouble with. Why don't you protect yourself where you are part of the family? I'm tired of being the bridge. The, oh God almighty, the good one. I know, I don't want to talk about it now. So just what? Your grandbaby and a new deep recorder. I need to be here, not there. I'm going to lose it. So what are we doing? The tape recorder. Music for, from the family for 621 that we met with yesterday. This is the best comfort that we, they, we could muster. Uh, I'm worried someone will try and stop me from getting it in the room. Bullshit. Well then I will feel compelled to write an order. Gee, wait a minute. Perfect. They walk to the elevator and get on. Have you talked to Rafe today? They aren't answering my texts and... Terry, are you... All is work phone, text alert. Emiliana is in a code. She told you uh, to text and call me? Oh, score! Tom the Bob always finds the way, miracle dude. Olive calls Tom. We see Tom with the phone between the ear and the shoulder while untangling oxygen tubing. Uh, so you can do a mitzvah for 621? I hear it's music. You know I'm in a band. Saxophone? Meet me outside this room. Oh, great. They get off the elevator and start towards the waiting room. We're on with Tom. That's a double duck down and dirty. Two scoop wazoo. Okay, we won't need an order. Thank you, though. Catch you later. Louisville, all of it. Um, it's a sucking national disgrace. Word. Maybe I can talk about it with you later, but you know, maybe I can't. She walks back towards the elevator. Hey, Terry. You're beautiful and precious and very, very bad. All is personal phone, text alert. She's admitted to the hospital for observation. Oh no, details? Less is more. 
Love you. Olive hits the glass wall of the ICU waiting room. She texts Rafe. Dula, where are you? Olive, I'm uh, here. <laughs> Tom, uh, for the gentleman in 621, uh, from his daughter to play for him, she believes he can be carried oh. by these sounds he loves. It's something. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, and I need to do something. My grandbaby. Sweet, I, I, I need this. For them, instead of being able to hold his hands or touch his cheek or tell him how much he is loved, it's me suctioning and all and tubes. Thank you, you know, for asking me. It's something, you know? He takes the bag and Olive follows him to the room next to 621 where he puts on protective gear. He wipes the plastic bag, recorder, and cassette, and then goes through the connecting door that lets him into enter room 621. He looks up at Olive, sets the recorder on the overbed table, inserts the cassette, and makes a big show of pushing play. He shows Olive the music with his body, swaying as he renders care. Tom, he's one of my favorites. I hope he lives. She goes back out of the ICU. Off all of her hands, gets in the elevator. When I was taking care of people with AIDS, I washed my clothes at the end of the day, even after we knew it was a blood-borne disease, and that it's relatively hard to catch. It wasn't rational. But I did it anyway. But I held the hand and touched the face of every person who had AIDS that I knew or cared for. AIDS can only be caught by a limited number of very specific means, not including breathing. She exits the elevator and heads to the back of the hospital. COVID is easy to catch. Yeah, catch your breath, get caught in your throat. Catch me if you can. You're catching on. Oh, uh, you're catching on just by breathing. Oh, there she is. The music comes back very slowly. We got it in its room. <laughs> it's playing. Si, sí, gracias. Gracias. They continue dancing at each other, 10 feet apart, joined by the ensemble. The screens show, and we hear three shrieking ambulances with flashing emergency lights turn into the department's unloading bay next to them. They continue to dance in the orange smoke as lights and music transition to the next scene. Scene six, friends. The sirens fade, the lights change, the music resolves to La Vie en Rose by Saxon Ara. Olive dances with cowboy boots. Rafe brings out the wheelchair and IV pole festooned with scarves. The ensemble picks up scarves to wear around the neck, waist, head, with flair. They all dance, partner dance, with couples trading off so that everyone touches everyone, ending in a line dance of some sort. The music begins to fade down, and a monsieur comes out and greets Olive. Bonjour, bienvenue, welcome to El Gato Negro. Bonjour, El Gato Negro, black cat in Spanish. I'm in France, or in the mission. France, 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 I'm in France, and there's something I should be doing. I. The music starts up again and Olive dances with Terry while the other cast members bring the wheelchair forward. They are happy, they are touching each other. Finally, they lead Olive to the wheelchair and seat her, and Jake hands her a bowl. Here, Mom. Strawberry yogurt. But why? Because it's France? Oh, France! We have relatives from here and there's something I should, I have to do. 
Oh, your grandfather, he ate strawberry yogurt when I was a kid. I didn't meet anyone else who did until the, you know, hippie 70s. Why? I think it meant France to him. He served in the army in World War II in France and Germany. He was a medical officer that liberated Nordhausen, a concentration camp. He had pictures. You can't look, you can't look away. The pictures in a cigar box, in a trunk, with a medal and a gun. My brother and I found it, but we never told him. Did you eat strawberry yogurt with Grandpa? No, no, I didn't. It's one of those things I so wish I could change. Eat strawberry yogurt in his honor now. I think he was trying to eat meaning and memory into the bones and ashes of the death house to honor all those whose deaths we can't make sense of, you know? We say never again, and yet we're so close. She gestures to Jake to sit in the wheelchair. He does. I, I, I need to do something. Here. Now it's yours. The ensemble wheels him off stage. The lights change. All his figures and shadows the lights slowly come up again as she gets on the bicycle and rides. I watch the sun rise from up there, the hills of the Vézère Valley in the Dordogne. And the place I'm staying, El Gato Negro, in France. It's 2,800 feet from the center of Montagnac, near the caves. Wow. The interior edges of my sit bones the ischial tuberosities are sore. I mean, the bike seat is too narrow. It's, it's made for an androgen body pelvis. The pelvic bones, the pelvic girdle, it's, it's like the Pacific Rim, land surrounding the ocean where life begins. And it's mm -hmm. kind of shaped like a shark's jaw, another bony oval. And I, I came here to do something I have to visit Lascaux 4. It's the newest state-of-the-art cave replica. It's a short ride from here. Gets on the bike. From the Black Cat. Rides. I've seen pictures of Lascaux 4. It's a museum of sort. From the outside, it looks like a gash on the side of the hill. It reminds me of the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, DC. A mouth, a scar. A, a portal, promising passage. I remember stories and fragments I've read about the time in which the cave paintings were made. When I read them, I feel like I've woken from a dream and I'm finally in familiar territory. She stops riding, gets off the bike, wheels it to a bike rack, and likes it up, locks it up. The only other time I felt that way, like I was coming home, was driving east from Portland along the Columbia River toward the homeland of my indigenous relatives. My French relatives came there to the so-called New World. They married indigenous women and trapped animals, following the beasts as they ran. I eat huckleberry and salmon, trying to eat meaning and memory into the bones and ashes of that American genocide. I haven't been to Mali, where other ancestors lived and died by Portuguese slavers, both of whose blood I also have. Three continents of homelands and ancestors, colonizers, first people, slavers, and the enslaved. Broken pieces. She shows an e-card or ticket on her phone. Oh, e-ticket on the phone. On the screens, we see cave paintings. This is a portal. The lights become more unreal. Galleries. It's the life of the past. The ensemble comes out in animal masks with cardboard cut out animals and they pose and she sees them. Beasts painted on the walls. Bison, birds, caves. They're great bones holding open the cavities of the earth. A baby deer, played by Rafe, prances by. Oh, look! <laughs> a baby deer. Text alert. The lights begin to change out of fantasy. Oh, my phone? No, no, no. I'm in a cave in France, and it's beautiful. The lights are almost 
restored. Wait, wait, wait. I have to. Oh, I Te have to. Text alert. Emergency C-section, right now. Tell her parents, please. Oh, 32 weeks, Jake. Oh, no. Lights. Scene seven. The NICU, three days later. Jake is reclining in the wheelchair, shirtless, holding a baby, skin to skin. They are beautiful. Olive is on the phone with Jake. I got the picture. Oh, your baby, you look so big and beautiful. He's off the ventilator and breathing on his own. I hold him, skin to skin, Mom. He's so precious. Oh, I'm relieved they're letting you in to hold him. God, it's been so hard. Yeah, but you know, not so hard for me. For her, everything about the pregnancy was hard. And the delivery, it was only hard for me for one hour. The worst moment in that hour, I was sitting up by her head. There was a curtain across her chest. I brushed her cheek and her body jerked, like when someone's hit by a shark. It totally freaked me out, but it only lasted a moment. That one jerk, that was them pulling the baby out because his little head was down by her pelvis, engaged. They said they had to give a little jerk to get the baby free. And then he cried and everything. And he's just so, mom, he is, he's so precious. I forgot that Jake is a surfer. He knows sharks too. Are, are you afraid of sharks? I have that shark tattoo on my foot for respect, you know? I'm way more likely to be killed in a car accident getting to the beach than from a shark attack. People are tripping because people eat anything but are like, that's horrible if something wants to eat me. <laughs> Just another creature trying to live. Humans kind of suck sometimes. <laughs> I'm gonna go surfing with this little baby person someday. Someday sort of soon. Hey, send more pictures, okay? And do you want us to order some food for you? God, I wish I could come see him and you and his mama. Does she need anything? We're covered, but I'd love it if you'd bring the baby clothes out tomorrow. Wash them first, please. He's big, you know? Five pounds, bigger than anyone expected at 32 weeks. I hope the preemie stuff fits, but it's good he's big. When I hold him, I can feel his little heart and his breathing. It's a little like the ocean. Oh. Oh, oh, no. I, I, I gotta go. Something is happening in the unit. Here, one of the babies. Can't be on the phone. Love you. Love you, too. Olive text Jake. I'll grab Hubby some pussy. No, no. <laughs> pizza. Pizza. Pizza to your house later. He doesn't look at his phone. Lights out. Scene 8, the hospital. A year and a half later, January 8, 2022. In the foyer, we see Ray visible in the conference room on the phone, talking and gesturing. The chairs in the conference room have been pushed together to make a bed in the middle of the room. Everyone is still wearing masks. Ray, finally. It's sheeting down the waiting room windows, blurring the lights on the bay and Golden Gate bridges. And there's one patch of sunlight on the water out by Angel Island. And Due to COVID, blah, 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 the waiting room is closed. Well, I don't need to go in. The whole world is a waiting room. Terry comes out of the stairwell. Is Wraith here? I'm guessing. Astute as always. This was our room when we could be together. Anti-COVIDum before COVID, unlike in this Domque COVIDum. ACDC. You got it. Of course you did. That's how I think of it. For how many meetings and how many debriefs and how many goofy and not goofy moments did we sit here together? Not like now, sundered in Dom Koi Covidum. For as long as COVID lasts, as any of this lasts, and what do we really know for sure? Uh, we've learned to wait 14 days before we meet with the families of people who have COVID when they seem to be dying while having every possible intervention to keep them alive because sometimes they do come back. ACDC, huh? 
So you're a secret metalhead? My silence on the subject of heavy metal will never be breached. <laughs> That's not really the right word. ACDC claimed to be rock and roll, the punk and metal appellation came from other people. R&B now. Terry, not that I'm not riveted by your musical tastes, but Rafe, he, they need us. You got it for this? Yes, but after. Later, I want to show you pictures of my latest quilt. I'm trying to put it all, put it all out there. All, the, all this, everything that's happening. It's constructed of very small pieces, like after something blows up and the fragments settle. It's actually a little like the mural with all of our pictures. It's been unveiled in the cafeteria. Did you know that? All right, right after, okay. after Rafe. I'd like that, I'd like to see them both. Olive opens the conference room door and they enter. Rafe, I feel you bud, we're coming in, okay? She goes around the corner and sees Rafe. He is lying on his side on chairs with no arms pushed together. So, Dula, you had multiple code blues this morning, right? Pregnant mom was first, and all I could think about during the second was the baby. I was barely present. Do you know how she is, the baby? Wait, I don't want to know. She's alive and in the neonatal ICU. I asked Emiliana to update me. Okay, right. She said, the mom died without knowing her husband died. Is that a blessing? I think so. And how messed up is that? I guess they have had some. There are two other kids, so at least she has siblings. But will they be able to stay together? They let her uncle into the NICU to be her person. His wife, the dead mom's sister, is too distraught. She fought with her sister all through the pregnancy, trying to get her vaccinated. Her grief and anger is dissolving her. You know, when you're like, I'm so mad I could kill you. That was her, and now her sister is dead. Do you think that's an all-time low for the ICU? Taking a baby out of a, out of a dying mom that didn't have to die. She really didn't have to die. Code blue, room 613, code blue, room 613, code blue, room 613. Yeah, she didn't have to die. No, 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 I really dude, don't. Dude, buddy, you love my wonderful, wonderful way. If you don't have to go to the code. You don't have to do anything for anyone right now. You've taken care of all of us. It's only another hour to the end of the shift. Jeremiah's covering and the per diem chaplain's on her way in. Look, I've been pondering an excursion up the street. And yet, I'm going to go get us some fried chicken sandwiches from Brenda's. <laughs> or sushi. And a dozen ginger uh, snap cookies from La Farine. And I am texting the entire team who's in for dinner. After shift, those benches under the overhang on MacArthur. Stop. All of Stop. I, I can't. I mean, late. I decided. I decided last week, but I couldn't. I haven't said because I couldn't. We're, we're all vaxxed, right? So. We love you. We love you. You've meant everything to us. We want you to know that we'll keep on moving forward into beauty and conflict without you. You will be best remembered and loved. We want you to know it's okay to let go. You can be at peace. Let go. We, we love, love you. you. We'll miss, miss you. We'll, we'll be, be okay, okay without, without you. you. We love you. <laughs> you two are terrible. <laughs> We hold people in their grief and, if appropriate, coach them to say those things when they're dying to their dying loved ones. 
I'm not dying. Let go of my ass. <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> you two are completely creepy, demented, irreverent. Survival, baby. <laughs> and you are leaving us, right? <laughs> that is a death. Don't be mad. Mad, sad, bad, sad, I'm sad. Of course I'm sad. I'm sorry, Olive. I'm sorry. Sorry that I love you and loved working with you. I'm not, you little fucker. It was worth it. But fuck the fucking fuck fuck, man. And articulately <laughs> articulate. <laughs> I can barely believe it myself. I'm going to move in with my grandparents and take care of them and just make sandwiches for a while. <sighs> for their business and for a food bank. But we pretty much knew. Yeah, we knew. Tom and Liliana open the door and Tom sticks his head in. Hello, yoo-hoo, palliative care team. Here we come, ready or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I spaced. The referral for the husband who doesn't believe in COVID, whose wife has COVID. Oh, I'm supposed to call him. You know she's in the room next to the dead COVID mom who didn't need to be dead. Susie, that mom, her name is, was, she's Susie. Yeah, that'll be a tough call. That uh, Mr. Husband who doesn't believe in COVID, he's focusing all his grief and anger into Conspiracy theories that non-visitation is about stealing your stuff. Maybe we could- It's been attended to. Jesse, social worker extraordinaire, took care of it. She was so good with him. I heard her on the phone. The poor guy. All he really wanted was to get his wife's phone, iPad, and wallet. Mr. Husband hasn't been allowed to visit because of the COVID visitor restrictions. Jesse called me, and I got the stuff out of the room for him, and Jesse took it to him out back. She said he was still pissed. We probably could have handled it ourselves, but after taking the baby out of her, out of Susie, the ICU team, we just kind of, we didn't have anything left right then for a, a COVID denier. All is text alone, personal phone text alerts. <laughs> she watches a short video. We can barely hear Baby Shark. Oh, goody, 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 goody. goody. Okay, who says oh, goody? <laughs> what can possibly be oh, goody? Well, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that is oh, goody. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't concur. We do not say. Aww. <laughs> I'm on the oh, goody team. <laughs> Shark? It's the perfect song for CPR. A civilian did a successful street resuscitation to the baby shark song. <laughs> CPR class will never be the same, okay? Come on! Up, 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 up. Come on, let's go, let's do this! It's loud, the lights change to fantasy, and everyone but Rape joins in throwing themselves onto the knees and starting CPR. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Grandma shark, do 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 do. Daddy shark, do 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 do. Baby 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 shark. I will never tell. My lips are sealed. What happens in the conference room stays in the conference room. Baby shark. Unicorn poo bullseye and Ouija board diagnoses. And we've agreed on oh goody. <laughs> Beside it, Grandma, upon receiving video of a grandbaby, we'll continue to say oh goody. Any word on Susie's baby? Yes, we thought you'd want to know. That's why you're here. News. In person. Bad news. No, Bad no, news. no, no, no. She's 32 weeks, just like my grandbaby was, so she'll be okay. She will. She is, right? Yes. No, she's, she's doing really, she's doing really well. Everyone chill. They, they named her. That baby, they named her, they named her Grace. Grace? And her uncle asked us to tell you, Rafe, in particular. I got a call from the NICU with the message. Tell that chaplain who prayed with us that we named the baby Grace. <laughs> I don't know if I can stand it. Actually, I, I 
no, I can't. Because it's sweet. There's no escape, buddy. Isn't that what you always tell me? There's no escape from the sweet or the sour. Breath at the end of breath. Wow. You really are a respiratory therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm done. I'm leaving to go take care of my grandparents and make sandwiches. How did you know to find me here? Oh yeah, I text them. How did you know to find me here? Well, we figured you weren't going to hide out in your office or the chapel because, well, duh, that's where everyone would look for you. Is everyone looking for me? Mm -hmm. Everyone, the Pope, the President, the And Apostles. several French Elvis <laughs> Presley impersonators. <laughs> oh, Olive. <laughs> The thing I want to look for is a mural. Let's go see it, please, everyone. They get up, walk out across the foyer and into the elevator, standing as far apart as they can get. Uh, I'm not sure about the trip to Europe. I have to go to Amsterdam, to the Anne Frank house. I think my dad would want me to go there. And then maybe Molly. There's something I have to find, but I don't know if I can leave my grandson or my son. Molly, my good surf. Oh, you surf? Yeah. Molly, people. People. Molly. I could take a travel nurse gig for more money than I make now, get a posting at the border, and and start looking for those kids. Rafe, it's not like you're leaving tomorrow, right? Actually, yes. <laughs> I gave two weeks notice two weeks ago. Oh. I didn't want a long, drawn-out goodbye. See, like I've always said, waiting sucks. Uh, aren't we, like, always sort of waiting, like, from one breath to the next? Oh, are you serious? Really? What? You're welcome. Not only my best friend. I'll be wrong. Yeah. They get off the elevator and walk to the mural. The lights change. The screens project the mural. They see it out over the audience. It is a cityscape of Oakland made out of fragments of ID photos. Is it really made from all our ID photos and, and selfies? All of us. Medical, clerical, engineering, and, and tech? All of us? <laughs> That's what they said in the admin meeting. This is a species of art that is verifiably quilt adjacent. They are searching <laughs> and finding themselves fragments of their faces in the mosaic. There. That could be me in the old Oakland Tribune building. <laughs> and me in this brick wall over here. A piece of me, maybe, here on the hillside? Green eyes in the bushes near Lake Merritt. Oh, well, here we all are, floating or fixed, together and apart. We get broken and remade. The lights go down and I'm finding people in the mural. Oh, all right. okay, there's, there's Teresa. Michael. Oh, Chuck. Oh, that's Winberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh. End of play.